Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NQ. Today we're taking a look at an amazing tool called ICT. ICT from Hotif is an amazing tool that just simply allows you to create incredible cities super easily. This streamlines the workflow of generating cities that comes with buildings, parks, props and all of that stuff. So instead of creating these things one after the other, you can simply go ahead and start creating cities super easily and quickly. And for those who like to take a look at this, you can go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can grab it for 25% off. And with that said, let's dive right into it. So Blender simply open, all you need to do to get things going is go over to edit, go over to preference and install the add-on. And once you've got the add-on installed, all you need to do is click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close your window. And once we're done installing the add-on, all we need to do is to simply get rid of this cube, tap in on the keyboard, go over to where we have ICT and click on start. Click on OK to start creating the city. Now a few things to keep in mind for optimization is to simply go over here and turn off the outliner and we can also go over to where we have our renderer. Let's just simply switch this to cycles, set this to GPU, go all the way down right here where we have simplify. I'm going to drop this and probably say 256 because you know we don't want so much text just to be rendered and I'm going to crank this by four. And the reason is because this has a ton of texture. And of course, if you have huge stuff happening in your scene, you can always switch to proxy mode just to get your scene performing really, really quick. And how you edit your city is very simple. Simply go over to the edit section and this will allow you to use the three component mode that currently exists. Say for example, we would like to add a loop. We can hit control and R on the keyboard and add a loop. To every part that you add loops, this automatically generates a road. And there you go. So you want to generate another road I see? Okay, so we can also go ahead and do that. And now we've started creating cool stuff. We can of course also go in and have some parts of this selected and we can simply push this all the way out and we can make some more changes. Probably we want something like that. We we'll probably want something a bit more interesting like this. Yes, you can. For those who are also thinking about, you know, using the edge tool, we can also do that. So in this case, I can simply tap E on the keyboard and tap Y, which is the axis and drag all the way out. And we have that. And maybe I want to add another road. Yes, we can. And probably you want to make some more edits. You can also go in and make as many of these edits as you want. You'd also notice that as we push this around that the building also automatically adjusts. And this is just one of the beautiful things that comes with this tool. And because cities are never really block like or simply you know, having that kind of shape will go in and randomize the shape of the city. All of the edits that deals with the city and also the road, which we're going to talk about happens right here. Now for the city, if you're thinking about playing with the procedural one, this is what we've got It's fully procedural. All you had to do was just click and drag and there you have yourself a city. But if you like to create packs, you can also do that. So I'm simply going to hit A on the keyboard to select every single thing and we can select different kind of packs that we want to create. So this is literally just going to replace the entire city with packs once we click assign. And once we do that, there you go. You now have yourself some pack. If you're trying to replace the whole buildings you've got with other custom buildings that now comes with this, you can. So you can also do the same thing. One thing for the developer is if it's possible to make these thumbnails a little bit smaller, that will be super cool. So if we would like this to replace every single thing, we can have that selected go all the way down and we can click on assign. And this is going to generate buildings everywhere. You can also select just one chunk. Say, for example, we can just select this face and probably just replace that face with this. And this would be so cool if it has a few more parameters that you can use for resizing and all that. But in this case, this isn't what we want. We just want to create procedural buildings. So we're simply going to have that selected, click on assign, and there we go. We have ourselves a very cool building that we can work with. In terms of story building counts, which has to do with the floor size, you can also make changes. So if we click right here, the more sizes we add or the more floor counts we add, all the buildings get to grow. So if you would want to increase the floor of the buildings you have in general, you can simply go ahead and do that. And that is pretty dope. Other things that I think you guys may need to know about has to do with the road tool. Now for the road tool, what we need to do is simply go right in here and we're going to jump from the proxy mode because within the proxy mode, you probably wouldn't see everything that simply makes this cool. But once you're out of the proxy mode, you can see. So to start adding stuff within the road section, you can go in and make those changes. So let's simply zoom right in. If we like to play with the benches, we can do that. There's also a few options for trees because 
we do have a bunch of tree sections. So the city is built in such a way where there are greeneries around. You also find a few dustbins around. There's also lampposts and all that. So all of those are here. Say, for example, there is this section and we would like to add a few bullets to it. What we can do is this. We can have that section selected and we'll find the bullet we want to add. Probably this one might be cool. And we can click on the word assign. And once we do that, this is automatically going to run through and assign bullets right here. So you would notice that it just assigns it only on the spot where we have things happening. So any other part, like parts like this, we don't have those. But parts like this, yep, we do. And this also comes with some spacing tools. So you probably want to space this. And I guess the more the number, so if I set this to 1.5, the more the spacing. So we can see that. We can also just simply crank this to about, say, 3.5 maybe. And the more the number, the more the spacing. And the same thing happens with every other thing right here. Yeah, it's also the imperfection section, which deals with the imperfection that we have on the road. So if you like to space them, probably you want to increase the density of the leaf, which I'm going to set to maybe about three, for example. Or probably you want to increase the number of manholes and water puddles and all that stuff. Yes, you can. Now let's simply go in and take a look at what we've been working on. And if I simply jump out of the Edit City, we would go ahead and look at this in our renderer. Actually, let's turn on the denoiser so we can have this running really quick. And there we go. We, so you notice that we've got puddles right there. Actually, let's go in and drop Suzanne right around the point like so, so we can frame it on her. Okay, so you notice that we've got puddles right here. And we've also got a few things happening just around this point. So you'd also see the trees that we've got. We've got the lambs. We've got every single thing that we've just played with. And this is more of a cultural mix looking scene. And hopefully with more updates, we would be having more and more assets to work with. And with this, we're simply done with what we have. There's also another section which has to do with options. And these options deals with assigning road, removing road from several parts. And uh, these are basically very simple things that you might want to consider looking at. Now let's talk about fine tuning our scene. So now that we've got this beautiful scene here, we're going to go over to the folks at physical starlight and atmosphere and add a simple atmosphere, you know, because this doesn't look so bright. So we can add that. And with this, we have a lot of options. Okay. And the options that we have deals with so many kind of lights that we can select from. We can play with the atmosphere, however we want. We can play with the sun, however we want. And we can also throw in few clouds and also just fine tune the entire scene how we choose. And once we have that ready, we can actually go ahead and do some more interesting things by using some traffic tools, you know, just put a few cars here and there as this tool simply promises that it will be coming with cars and in the coming iteration. But that is not what we currently have. And once we're done with the cars and probably just put in a few things there, we can add a few crowds here and there just to finish and fine tune the scene that we are just creating. And this is how you get to start making very interesting cities in Blender by simply using iCity. This is a very simple tool to start creating cities with. It is completely easy for you to go in and start building or banging out that city that you've always wanted to make. And a huge shout out to Hotifer for making this possible. So for those who are thinking about checking these ones out, or probably you want to check out these other ones, or maybe you want to see more building tools that you can use in Blender and create amazing buildings for yourself, which are pretty procedural as well, then you can simply take a look at the link in the description and check this out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.